been done before. This stuff used to be the norm. It's only in the last 20, 20 odd years, 25 years at the absolute most, that this unbelievably unhealthy distortion has exploded in terms of both corporates and corporate or, you know, organizational behavior and, um, and the financial system and banking behavior. Okay, right, let's move on to um, sort of a bit more normality, because I know you live in Wiltshire, not far from Avebury and Silbury Hill. Is that what attracted you to move there in the first place, all the sort of energies there and everything? Of course, yeah. um, of course it was. I, I loved, I've always loved sacred landscapes because I've known at a very deep level and I've experienced their their wonder, their energies, what I've learned from them all my life. And so I've always loved Avebury and this whole landscape. But in the early 90s, I was also um, fascinated by the phenomenon of crop circles. And of course, Silbury and Avebury have been the epicenter of the worldwide um, crop circle phenomenon. And so I was very much attracted and started to experience and explore uh, crop circles um, so all of that brought me down here. And it's also on every level a beautiful, wonderful place to be, to live. So although I do, you know, my husband Tony and I do a lot of traveling around the world, this is where we come home to. This is our sanctuary. This is where our hearts are. This nurtures us at that very, very deep level always. Right, because I was going to mention uh, crop circles because obviously that's, where you live is sort of like the epicenter of them. Um, yeah. a, a lot of people listening are, are getting confused because there's people who's, who are coming forward and saying we made these circles and so on. How do you tell which are real and which, which are sort of man-made? I'd go beyond that question and I, I felt for myself I needed to go beyond that question hmm. many, many years ago. I, I, I now say I don't care. Um, I mentioned the Sistine Chapel a while ago. Um, do we really care that Michelangelo laid on his back for 10 years creating it? Or do we, when we look at it, see transcendence, see this amazing, exquisite, literary work of art? And what message does that give us? Um, for me, the crop circles, regardless of how they're formed, and by the way, I've done a lot of research, and my own view is that there is far more happening here than merely people going out into the landscape doing these. But for me, it's the message. It's, it's about what they've taught me about my own sense of reality, what they've taught me about my own perspective of consciousness, what I've experienced within them, what I've learned through them. I mean, the 13th step began because on the 3rd of May, 1998, I got a, a psychic guidance to go to Silbury Hill. And I lived a, a couple of miles, um, probably a mile or so west, uh, east of there at the time. Um, and the following morning, I went and climbed Silbury and looked down on this incredible um, double circle, crop circle in oilseed rape um, beneath me and gained an incredible sense of, of knowing but what it was I didn't know but I knew something had moved and as I write about in the 13th step that literally began a whole process that led to those journeys so that began with a crop circle but before that it began with a psychic message to go to Silbury and I know to witness that crop circle because mm. obviously connected with the area around Wiltshire is the idea of UFOs and extraterrestrials you you do mention extraterrestrials in some of your books um do you believe that we were visited by aliens in the past and are we still be, being visited by aliens my own again it's more through my experiences and and you know nearly 60 years now of of research and also talking to many elders of ancient traditions including Credo Mutwa um, the the uh, you know the most senior Zulu in Africa talking to Aboriginal elders talking to Native American elders and and many others from them it, it's it's another day at the office it's like of course there are extraterrestrials of course 
they have visited in the past, of course they continue to do so. Um, you know, many of these elders have had their own direct experiences. And there's some interesting books coming out now, and I mentioned one in, in Hope, of, you know, over many years, very uh, credible witnesses, airline pilots, uh, military pilots, uh, police people, you know, um, have had their own direct experiences. I have myself. And, you know, I think it's pretty insulting to say to those sort of people, to say to the elders of, of, of you know, um, very truthful people and very experienced people who are great observers that this is all nonsense. I, I actually find it quite insulting. I also, as a physicist and astronomers now, and an astronomer, you know, astronomers now are, have, have discovered so many extrasolar planets circulating, cir you know other stars that the view has gone from being oh well there can't be many planets like earth to my goodness our galaxy is probably you know replete with solar systems and planets that can actually support uh, biological life so I think we're really you know the whole mindset is changing I think I read a recent survey that said about a half of people in the UK I'm very strongly convinced of extraterrestrial life at a conscious and at a an advanced level. Hmm. Right, we're nearing the end of the interview now, but I've got perhaps the most important question I'm going to ask you is obviously to do with the 21st of December 2012. How should we be facing that and thinking about that and obviously beyond that date? Because there's been so much obviously written about it and said about it what what do you think is is um going to happen or or will happen afterwards and so on <laughs> how should i know no. <laughs> <laughs> I, seriously i think anybody who says they know what's coming after mm. that um you know I, I i i certainly don't and i've been looking at this for all my life and i know many many other people have and and they would not claim to know what's happening before beyond that. What I would say is that the elders that I speak to and my own experience um, is that yes, we are in the end of an era. Um, I feel that the December solstice of 2012 is significant, but whether it's, it's a point in time that at the time itself passes without anything looking you know, a, a tipping point. Often, we only realize tipping points after the event. Um, so whether it is, you know, a, a, an all fireworks display or whether it's a moment that, that, you know, ostensibly passes without change, I do feel we are in the end times of an era and the beginning times, the birthing times of a new era. So it's rather like a birth process, you know, is the is the baby born when the head comes out or when the feet come out, you know? Hmm. And I feel that we're in the birth canal of something amazing and wonderful at the moment. What I'd also say is like any birth process, my mum used to go around and help the local midwife uh, many, many, many years ago. And um, whilst the midwife was doing various things, mum would be the one who was holding the hands of the expectant mother and saying, just breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> and it, it's a time for us just breathing. It's a time, in my perspective, to make our choices. And it's not that we look ahead to December. It's about making our choices here and now in every moment. You know, do we make our choices out of fear or do we make our choices out of love? Because I've said this for many years and, and I'm continuing to say it. It's our choices in the here and the now that I believe will co-create whatever does happen in December 2012 and what does happen beyond then. And the more we can make our choices from love rather than from fear, and I mean that in every way, all the little choices we make, as big as, as well as the big stuff we, uh, we, you know, the big choices we make, that will make the difference. You know, do we make a choice to come together to support each other? to love ourselves, to love others, to be loved? Do we act kindly? Do we act from joy and in joy? 
Um, or do we go into old patterns, you know, the betrayal patterns, the abuse, the abandonment, the denial, the rejection, Yeah, you know, all those patterns that I talk about in hope and all those patterns that I really do feel we're able now to heal and to resolve. That's what for me 2012 is about. And, and what we choose will determine and co-create what comes after. All right, that's great. I've just got one final question I want to ask you. Um, I know you're a very busy lady, but what have you, else have you got lined up for the rest of the year? Because I know you, you're going to be speaking at Glas the Glastonbury Symposium in, in a few weeks' time. What, what other things have you got planned? I am. I'm leading a, a group a journey, a sacred journey, through Albion for the week leading up to the Olympics which I'm very much looking forward to. I am speaking at uh, Glastonbury, as you mentioned. I have a weekend, my only weekend workshop down um, with Susie Anthony at a place called the Manor House uh, down near Glastonbury uh, in early August. Um, I'm speaking at a, a couple of conferences in September. Um, but in, in terms of any of those events, um, if people want to come on my website, and go to the events section of the website, they'll see whatever is forthcoming. But my guidance this year has really been to keep as much open as possible. My schedule is usually filled to the gunnels, but this year I've really been guided to just be open, to go with the flow of whatever comes, and just follow that. And I suppose if I was to invite our listeners, it would be to pretty much do the same go with what calls them go with the flow of these amazing transformational times and perhaps find some space to reflect some space to deal with anything that is still coming up for them um, and find ways of, of embracing that and releasing that to be as free as we can be, to be as light as we can be, to be as flexible as we can be, because in a way, we're being invited to become newly born again. Right. Well, with those fantastic inspiration words, I'd, I'd like to thank you, Jude, for uh, being interviewed today and for all, all that you said, all, all the advice and the inspiration. Thank you, Jude. You're very welcome, Mark, and thanks to you and to Ian for all the great work you do, and thanks to all our listeners. Much appreciated.